Welcome home. It's been over three months now since we came back to our off-grid homestead with our newborn baby and nearly all of our time has been spent making the front of our temporary tiny home beautiful. After building stone walls, pouring a concrete patio, and building a brick pizza oven, we're onto the finishing touches of our outdoor living space. But it wouldn't be a day of working on the farm without a few lessons learned. We're gonna spray some acid. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? And some problems to fix along the way. Good morning, you guys. Good morning, good morning. Welcome back to Lola's farm. Welcome back to life with our family. Everyone's here. Besides me. Besides the baby. She's still <laughs> sleeping. She was very restless last night, so I feel like she's probably going to sleep a little bit more this morning than usual. Which gives us some ample time to make a fat loaf of bread. This is gonna be the first loaf of bread that we've cooked in this pizza oven. We're not gonna get it as hot as we would for regular pizza. We're not gonna get it at like 800, 900 degrees. We're gonna get it around like 350, 400. Get a nice rustic loaf of bread in there. It does take a little while to heat up. We've been messing around with it a little bit and it does take a while to heat up. So that's why it's one of the first things that I'm getting done is just get it nice and hot in there. Is it easier to make it in there than it is in that wood stove? Oh yeah. Why? What do you think? That makes it have more space. Probably, yeah. Yeah. And you can make it a little bigger. Yeah. yeah it's nice. It's like so nice. <laughs> can we just hang by the fire all day? Yeah. <laughs> just a little bit of advice for you guys when you're making your coffee in the morning. The grinder is everything. Okay, it's not everything, but it's a lot. If you guys aren't using a good grinder, get a good grinder. It's gonna make your coffee taste so much better. And you'll probably end up going with a manual grinder like this because the electric ones are really, really expensive. And if you're just getting into coffee, these manual grinders are like 50 or 60 bucks. Say good morning, everyone. Morning. John, nice and gentle. Nice and gentle. Good job. These goats are so, so pregnant. Their bellies are huge. They have less than a month left and we're gonna have little baby tiny goats running around on this farm. It's gonna be such a blast. Look at her belly. Look how big this is. And that's not because she's just eating a bunch of grass because she just started eating grass today. That's a bunch of babies in there getting ready to come out into the real world. Are these two pendejos trying to cut a, cut his log? I'm just letting him go. I. Rodrigo, you know? You go, you go, you go. Hit it! Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Honey, why don't you grab the axe? <laughs> oh boy. Let's go like this! Show the power! <laughs> there you go. Oh yeah? Let's see what you got, honey. Got him, bro. Show bring, me. Bring I got that. a tool made in America. Made in America. Bring, bring that. This is about, actually, this is made in Sweden. <laughs> Sweden. No, no, no. Today's 
it's made in America. It's just all about brute force. <laughs> <laughs> There you go! <laughs> Wait a minute. I make a shot. I don't know, honey. It's kind of just pulling it. <laughs> That's all we got. Alright. Let's just throw it in. <laughs> Let's just do it. Didn't realize the oven's like 800 degrees right now. <laughs> so I put it in there within 30 seconds. It just seared to a crisp. So I'm just going to leave it there. We've spent one year training these puppies and it's taken that long for us to finally feel comfortable letting them free all day, every day. We've had to keep them by the fence while we trained them because we had five of them and all five of them couldn't be in this workshop. So it's been a lot of work, just a little bit every single day on training these guys. And now I'm finally so happy to make their life better and just let them wander the farm all day long. This is what living on a farm is all about, baby. We got dogs running around everywhere. We got chickens producing our food. We got goats cutting our grass. We got plants growing for food. We have an oven that's getting ready to cook some bread that I think we messed up. <laughs> I mean, it's a little, you know. All right, maybe not. This would not be a proper christening of the oven with bread without some homemade jam from the land. Dude. Brought you a snack, dude. Homemade bread with homemade jam from your berries. Uh. <laughs> oh my god, this is so good. <laughs> this is from the berries. On your bushes. And this bread, you made this bread in the... <laughs> <laughs> Here's a view of Rodrigo's house down here. Third beam is up. The horizontal beams are going across. You're good. You can dance. You deserve it. You've been crushing it down here. Yeah, boy. <laughs> he had to put in six new footers, which has just kind of been the story of our life here in Panama. I feel like it's always more footers, more footers, more footers. Mostly just because the plans that we got for both the buildings that we've built were just way under supported in, the, in footers. So you can see he has three more going across here. And we'll be back down here soon. We got a couple more things to finish up in the workshop. Rodrigo's about ready for a hand once we start doing more of the horizontal beams. The only thing though, bro, you're the one that's going up there. I can do it. All right, good. Because I'm, I'm afraid of heights, so I'm not doing it. I'm a bro. You're a big boy. You're a big boy. <laughs> We're gonna be staining the stamped concrete today with an acid stain, but the first thing that we need to do is just clean all this off. I'm super excited because we've been just looking at this like kind of cheesy stamped concrete, and at the end of the day today, it should look really good. And kind of the cool thing about today is that our workspace is right near the fire, and it's a pretty chilly day today, so we're gonna stay nice and toasty warm, get to look at this fire all day while we're working on the concrete. Remember it in here. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. So now we're going for task number two. <laughs> we're gonna spray some acid. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> Let's just go back here and take a little peek. What do you think? It looks really, really good, honey. 
I mean, the front side at least, because that's probably been an hour of burning. Is that what you say? That's the word. <laughs> yeah, it looks amazing. It almost looks black. It's like a very, very dark brown. Maybe I'll rinse the front so it slows down, because it's getting yeah, dark. So once you rinse it, that's going to be like the color, right? It, it'll still keep going a little bit. Look at the difference. Look, at this is like light brown, dark brown, but this is like really, really black. Kind of crazy how just the time just changes it. Honestly, I was regretting stamping this for a little while as I've been watching. I'm like, man, it kind of looks tacky. Now with the stain, just like changes everything. Yeah, definitely. It actually makes it look real. The stain was so much more important than painting it because if we painted it, it really would have looked tacky then, I feel like. Exactly, yeah, because I feel like with like the stain, it like creates kind of a different variation of colors, which makes it look really, really realistic. It's things, pretty good. Things are looking up. Things are looking up, baby. <laughs> All right, the bread is eaten, the jam is gone, the concrete is stained with acid. Now we just gotta let it sit for a little while, and while we do that, we're going on a little adventure. I really want to go on this adventure in this Jeep because that's what we got it for. It's kind of like our adventure mobile, but I was going through it the other day. I had a mechanic come up and just like, we were just going through everything together. Open up the air filter. There's no air filter in there, which is just awful. I mean, I don't know why they took the air filter out, but that's just awful for the engine. So we're not driving that until we get one. So even though we don't have a Jeep, we do have uh, Alejandro Garcia. Which is, I'd say it's as good as a Jeep Rubicon. What do you think? Better. I mean, you could sing, you could dance. You don't give me headaches like the Jeep Rubicon does. No. <laughs> She's literally putting herself to sleep by chewing on her binky. For some reason, she just never took the pacifier well. We, we tried in the beginning and she did it a little bit, but like never really wanted it. Just always wanted the real deal. <laughs> So one of the most amazing things about the coffee company that we have is we actually get to visit the farms that our coffee is grown because we live in the town that all of the coffee is grown. How come every time I see you, you're in a new car? People, people are going to start it, saying that you are dealing drugs, it's, bro. It's, it's not even mine. <laughs> you, you, you just you just Grand Theft Auto to Picanto? You did, didn't you? You know, I, you know I, I'm in a need for speed. <laughs> Every farm that we buy coffee from, we go to and we look at the exact lot where the coffee was grown. And we're buying 950 pounds of Pacamar coffee that all came from right here. And if you guys don't know, this is our coffee partner, Arturo. And we're gonna give you a little 30 second coffee lesson from the coffee professional himself. So I wouldn't say I'm a professional, but I'm learning as I go. The Pacamara is known for having huge leaves and huge trees as well but this is a new crop so you can see the plant is definitely smaller but if we look at the uh, the fruit right here there's no doubt that it is a pacamara this is a special moment of the year because it's a uh, it's a, what they call the blossom time this will tell you how good or how healthy is your new, new harvest going to be and we see lots of flowers and we're very happy for it. So we bring the coffee directly from the farm to our little roastery here in Bogete. We roast the coffee in micro batches, four pounds at a time. Which ensures that the coffee is the best possible, flavorful and as tasteful as it can be. And then all the coffee is hand selected by Arturo and his family here on this table, one bead at a time. It's bagged up in these bags, a label's put on it, and it's shipped to my mom's house in the United States. Where my best friend Sarah, shout out to you girl, fulfills all of the orders there and then gets directly sent to you guys. There's no middlemen involved, there's no massive corporations involved. Even our bags are made in the United States. They're not pumped out of some factory in China. We really care about every process. Every single detail. All along the way. So this coffee, this Pacamara from Bonita Springs is called 
Baby Blossom. It looks exactly like this. By the time we put this video out, it's gonna have just landed in the United States. It's ready to ship out. Super fresh. So if you guys wanna try it, there's a link in the description below. So the mechanic that we use here in town, um, when we told him that we were going to pick up our Jeep, he actually said to us, he, he recommended, first of all, for us not to go get it. <laughs> and the second thing he said was, really the reason why is because I don't want to work on it. I guess Jeeps are kind of known to be a little problematic at times. Here's the old oxygen sensor. Pretty rusted pretty corroded. This part's a pretty common fail point on Jeeps. I'm not sure if this is gonna fix the code that we're getting, P0420, but I'm gonna swap it with this new oxygen sensor now. When Kaylee told me that she really, really wanted a Jeep Wrangler and that it was her dream car, and when we decided to buy one, I knew it was gonna be a lot of work for us because Jeep Wranglers have a tendency to break, but I was okay with it and honestly super excited about it because that's more to learn. I haven't worked that much on cars before. I've done a little bit, especially living in a bus. You're just bound to learn things here and there. Come on, bro. You crushed that thing. We crushed it, bro. <laughs> For me, I just have to be patient and take my time. Just changing those two sensors took two hours. This is the first time you see me work on this Jeep Rubicon, but it definitely won't be the last, especially that we've been driving around for a while without an air filter. I don't know what that's gonna do to our engine, but I know we can get a decent mechanic with some knowledge to help us if we have to do anything on this car. And also YouTube's just one hell of a tool, so I can always resort to that and try to fix as much as I can possible. So now that some time has passed since we did the stain, it's very, very dark. <laughs> it definitely looks a heck of a lot better than it did when it was just regular concrete color. You can't really tell in the camera, but in person, you can definitely see that it still has some kind of like different variations of brown in there. So it's not like completely black as if we were to paint it. But I'm honestly super, super, super happy with how it came out. So while Jord's still working on the Jeep, the sun is starting to set and it is getting chilly out there. So Sadie and I are gonna take cover in here. The wind's starting to pick up again. And it's time to make some dinner. Not for me, not for Sadie, not for Jordan, but for our other princess. What are you doing over there, honey? Are you waiting for something special? It's gonna be a little bit, I gotta cook it. All right. This little bubba turned on me real fast. I thought we were doing pretty good on time, but I should have known because she did not sleep very well, very well at all last night. She's gotta go to bed, but she really needs a bath. So I'm filling up the sink now. I'm gonna try to give her the quickest tubby of all time. Hopefully that'll kind of put her into the zone and she'll go to bed nice and sweet. Okay, let's go. L is for lullaby, dum di di dum. M is for the moon shining bright through the lace. And for my nose on the front of my face. We got chicken, beef, broccoli, carrots, beans. What am I missing? Zucchini and a little bit of turmeric rice. Put salt and pepper in there for you? I did not put salt and pepper, no. <laughs> All right, you guys, we're going to bed. We're tired. Sadie's already asleep. We're both exhausted. I'm gonna eat my smoothie bowl first. Thank you guys so much for following along, supporting us, supporting our family. We love you guys so much. We'll see you in the next one.